Hey everybody, today we're going to be testing out temperatures and specifically what effect they're going to have when you go to remove a nut or a bolt. Now we already know if you heat something up with a torch, it's typically a lot easier to remove, but what we don't know is exactly how much easier it is to remove. So what I'm going to do in this video is torque the nuts down in the fixture that's in the vise to specific amounts. Then we're going to try and remove those nuts and we're going to measure what the torque is in reverse. I'll do that at ambient room temperature. I'll also freeze them and heat them up to almost red hot glowing. And we're going to see firsthand what the differences actually are. All four nuts, bolts, and washers are going to be completely identical. And if you notice, we have a bolt fed up underneath into the fixture that's in the vise. That's then clamped down with a nut and washer above holding it to the fixture. And then we have a loose nut and a loose washer above that. What we'll do is run that nut down on the bolt against the washer and then that's going to press into the other nut underneath of it. We'll be able to torque that down to a specific number and because it's going to be a lower torque value than the nut underneath, when we go and remove this, nothing's going to spin on us. The tools that I'll be using to run this test will be a snap-on tech angle torque wrench with a maximum range of 100 foot-pounds. This can accurately measure torque in forward and reverse, and we're going to use it not only to tighten up the nuts, but also to remove them and take a reading as to how much torque was required. Now what we'll do is test the nuts and bolts as far as temperature goes as we go along the way, and we're going to do three different runs. The first is going to be at ambient room temperature, but because when we initially torque them down, the threads will heat up, we need to cool it back off before we remove them. To do that, I'm going to use some room temperature water that's inside this bottle. It's going to go ahead and cool all the metal back off, and then we can go through our test to remove all the nuts. We'll torque them all back down, and we're going to super cool them using a can of dust off. And then finally, we're going to torque them all back down, and then we're going to superheat them using a mini ductor too. Now before I do each test, as far as removing them, I will verify that the temperatures have changed using a Milwaukee M12 thermal imager, and this should give us very accurate results. As we do the testing, I'm going to mark down the results on this board, and you can see the different color combinations that I've used. Green is going to be the ambient room temperature after I cool it down with the room temperature water. Cold is going to be after I freeze the nut, and then hot's going to be after I heat it completely up. What we'll do is take a reading off each of the four bolts. We'll then take an average of those readings and mark them down as far as the amount of torque required to remove it. And then we're going to take a look at that versus the percentage of the original install torque to see which one of these is going to be most effective. For consistent results with our testing, I'll be using a Snap-on 3 8 inch drive tech angle torque wrench. Because I'm using a digital torque wrench, it's going to show me exactly the amount of torque that I'm placing on a nut, and I have this preset at 100 foot-pounds. I'll verify that all four nuts are at the exact same torque, and then we'll go ahead and try and remove them.
Okay, we just got done with each of the four bolts in all three runs, and the numbers were fairly consistent with the ambient as well as cold temperatures. Then with the hot temperatures, they did fluctuate, but I think I know the reason why. Starting out with the ambient temperature, when we lowered it back down after initially torquing it to room temperature, it only needed 90 foot-pounds to remove a nut that was torqued to 100 foot-pounds, or 90% of the original torque. When we froze that bolt, it only needed an average of 88 foot-pounds to remove it, or 88% of the original, which is basically the same as the ambient temperature. The reason for that is the fact that when we froze it, it froze the nut and the bolt, and they both slightly contracted. So even though the nut would have been tighter on it, the bolt would have theoretically shrunken also, giving us almost identical results. Now as far as the hot, when we heated it up extremely hot, you can see that we did have a fluctuation. With a high of 67 foot-pounds needed to remove it, and a low of 47 foot-pounds. And that's because in run one with bolt number one, I actually heated it up to about 900 degrees. Run two, I heated it up to about 800 degrees. Run three, I heated it up to 700 degrees. And then run four, I heated it up to about 600 degrees. And as you can see, that difference in temperature does make a difference in the amount of torque needed to remove the nut. As far as an average across the four different bolts, we had an average of 59 foot-pounds needed to remove it, or only 59% of the original 100 foot-pounds, which we placed on each nut. So, now you've seen proof that temperature really does matter. It didn't have that big a difference when we froze the nut and bolt because the numbers were almost identical to the ambient room temperature, but when we heated it up with the inductive heater, we noticed a dramatic change. It took a lot less torque to remove it than it took to install it, but there are a few things you want to keep in mind if you choose to go that route. There's only really two ways that you're going to heat up a nut and bolt, either an inductive heater like I showed you, which is the Mini Ductor 2, or you could use a blowtorch. Now either one of those would have fire hazards along with them, so you never want to use them somewhere where there might be flammable materials. That could be oily rags, or maybe you're working on your tractor in a barn, the hay next to you could catch on fire burning everything up. I would always suggest doing that outside or in a well-ventilated area, because along with that is going to be smoke. Now if there's things on the nuts or bolts, that's going to be released into the air. And then the coating on the bolts will also be released into the air and you don't want to breathe that in. Make sure you are somewhere that's well ventilated so you don't make yourself sick. But as far as our testing goes, we've proved without a doubt that when you heat up a nut and bolt, it is going to be a lot easier to remove. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.